Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, hope you're all okay. Uh, this is day three of the newly named, thanks to Max, we have a winner, Virus Vlogs from Passwood High School's music department. Um, so we're on day three. Hope everybody has managed to get out and enjoy the sunshine and get some fresh air, keep themselves moving, and to start finding the positives to uh, the slightly weird situation that we're all in at the moment. Um, so, because we are on day three, we are on letter number three, which means it is C, and I really struggled for some reason today to, to think of C, musical words. Um, there are loads of them, there were just so many to pick from. I was thinking about technical terms like coda um, or chorus or things like that, there were loads of things to choose from. Um, so I just thought, well, hang on a minute, let's keep this simple and just pick C, C major. That is today's buzzword, uh, keyword for the letter C. So, C major, it is probably the automatic go-to key that people think of. I know that when we teach blues to year eight, um, I've just finished teaching it now, um, we teach it in C major, so we use chords one, four, and five, which means it's C major, F major, and G major. Um, so I would like you to go away and find out a little bit about C major. Why do we always use C major? You can give me the basic answers like, oh, it's all the white notes from C to C on the keyboard, or oh, middle C is right in the middle of the keyboard. But not all instruments are keyboards, and C is not always in the middle of all of those different instruments. So go away and find out. The answer is quite complicated. It depends on how many levels of ancient forms of notation and harmony you want to go through. But um, go away and find out why C major is the kind of go-to key. Uh, key stage four and five kids, and I know my year tens, we've really gone on about this, uh, we might want to think about when we're answering this question, um, the relative minor of C major, which might give you a hint as to the answer. So we go down three semitones from C, which takes us B natural, B flat, A. A minor is our relative minor. Um, so, it's a bit of a, an odd one, you know, the situation that we're all in at the moment. Um, and I was trying to think about what we could do in terms of a bit of well-being and um, looking after ourselves. And I have found these vlogs a way of, of really kind of um, keeping myself uh, organised and giving me some focus and not just kind of lounging around in my pyjamas all day. Um, this is a hoodie, not pyjamas, by the way, it's allowed. Um <laughs> So uh, the thing for today, I think I'm going to say is get organised as best as you can. Now, that's not to say we need to be doing maths from 9 till 9.50 and music from 9.50 till 11.40. And then we have a break for 20 minutes and then we do science. If that's what works for you, then that's what works for you. But for me, that hasn't worked since we've lost the kind of schedule and the routine of, of going to school. Um, I've tried to set myself some uh, goals that I want to achieve every day. So things that I want to get done. They could be big things, they could be small things. So today's list was I need to write some more of my dissertation. I need to record this vlog. One thing done. Uh, there's a huge pile of washing in our spare bedroom that we'll need to put in away, which is boring but necessary. Um, need to take the dog for a walk and post some birthday cards. And I need to update what I've set my year 10s and my year 12s on Google Classroom. Those are my five things to do today and if you've got a list of things you want to accomplish you can tick them off it's really satisfying um but it's not necessarily as strict or as rigid it might not work if you especially you've got siblings in the house and you're having to share a computer or you she's doing clarinet practice which means that he can't do guitar practice in the same room or something like that it might not work to be as rigid as as we are and as timetabled as we are at school but we still need to be productive with our time make the most of the opportunity which fingers crossed we're not going to get again this much time outside of school, but we still can be learning and, um, and achieving things in each of our day. So um, the wider listening and things uh, today. So I was trying to think of not pieces that began with C, but my head last night was so full of things that began, musical things that began with C. Automatically, I just started thinking of pieces that were either in C or uh, began with a C, film scores that started with a C. I was thinking about Celine Dion and Camila Cabello and all that. And I was like, ah. Um, so I have tried to pick a piece that I don't think very many of you will have heard, if any of you at all, but it is a properly good, feel good, toe tapping, makes you get up and have a little bit of a dance kind of piece. And I've tried to put in some things to do with C in it as well. So it is called the Clarinet Concerto by a guy called Artie Shaw. So clarinet and concerto, there's two words beginning with C, both musical. And while you are listening to it, I will put a link um, 
in the description below. While you are listening to it, obviously we can do a Dr. T. Smith uh, answer kind of style answer if we want to, if we'll be thinking about doing this as wider listening for Key Stage 4 and Key Stage 5, or even Key Stage 3, start us off. You know that uh, Dr. T. Smith is there on the cheat sheet on Google Classroom. Um, so here are some specific C-related five questions that I would like you to answer um, about the Artichoke Clarinet Concerto. So number one, so I'm going to have to keep referring to these notes because there's no way I can remember all this. Number one, what is a concerto? quite simple we study concertos at key stage four and at key stage five but it's quite a simple thing to define go away google it listen to some find out what a concerto actually is number two uh when was the clarinet invented there are lots of different things that developed into um the modern kind of clarinet as we would recognize it but what are the other instruments that came before it when did the the modern clarinet <coughs> Excuse me, that was because I've just eaten a flapjack, not because I've got the virus. Um, when did the current clarinet kind of uh, appear and what were the instruments that came before it that kind of developed into it? Um, then three questions about the clarinet concerto itself. Number one, or question number three, um, there is a section in this piece, and year eight, I'm thinking about you here, that is just using a 12 bar blues in C major. Can you find out where it is? It's a little bit more advanced than what we've been looking at with our basic triads, but it is there. Okay, so see if you can give me uh, like a timing on the video of uh, when the 12 bar blues in C appears. Question number four is um, at some point, and I'm not going to give you the answer. It's kind of a two part question. At some point in this piece, uh, there is a cadenza which is another word beginning with C. It's an Italian word. Again, loads of cross-curricular learning here. Um, first of all, what is a cadenza? Um, and uh, kind of describe it to me. Um, and then the second part of this question number four is what is um, the timing on the video when you hear this cadenza? Where does it start? And the final question about the Ardshaw Clarinet Concerto uh, the last note that the clarinetist, and it's obvious who he is playing the solo at the front on the video, um, the last note that he plays is the highest note on the clarinet. Can you have a guess at what that note might be? Bearing in mind the topic of today's video. Okay, um, so that's it for today. Uh, five things to remember. First of all, um, today's focus is C major. Uh, second thing, is about being organised and using your time well, making the most of the opportunities that we have in front of us. They might be a little bit different than normal, but they're still there. Um, and then number three is listening to the Artie Shaw, Shaw, sorry, clarinet concerto and uh, answering those five questions. I will put those in the uh, description, I think, if I can work out how, um, underneath the video. And the last two, as always, stay safe and stay sensible. No mass gatherings, look after yourselves. Uh, keep getting fresh air, keep in contact with us. It's lovely to see some of you starting to comment on the videos. Um, we are on Twitter as well. I will put our Twitter um, here or there, whichever way I manage to make it work um, <laughs> when I start editing this. Um, so yeah, please, please, please um, keep in contact with us. We are still here for you. You are still part of Pars Wood um, and hopefully we will see you soon. All right, thanks guys. See you tomorrow. Bye.